This is the largest prize in pool history, $200,000, eight pool game, Evan Reyes versus Mike Siegel. The Rays wins the lid. This is rough. Number one. It's the biggest night in pool history. To claim two out of three sets, Efren Reyes went through two days of competition in dramatic style, surviving to get the first crack at the king of the hill. He makes the ball on the break, and he has his choice solids or stripes. It's eight ball. Once he chooses the group, he then has to clear the table of all those balls, and then shoot the eight ball to win the game. Right here, the, the, yes, the strike balls are in um, a bad position, or there's two two strike balls that are, um, you know, together. together there. So I think he's going to go for the low balls right here, starting with the one ball. One ball in the corner. Lauren John, talk a little bit about some of the nuances for the uninitiated between nine ball and eight ball. If you boil it down, a lot of the players at this event have said what nine ball is to checkers, eight ball is to chess. Is that is that accurate? Absolutely. Uh, eight Six ball is, is, there's no luck involved in eight ball. I mean, you have to run out in eight ball. And if you run out and if you, if you, you know, get bad position on the last ball or something, you're finished. There is no, there is no getting it back in eight ball. Now, Ephraim is a Hall of Famer, and the reason he is here is the 42 best players in the world, including all the Hall of Famers, played round-robin matches for the last four days. And of all of those players, the best 42 players in the world, Ephraim came out on top. And that's why he's facing Mike Siegel. And now, this is a huge match. It's the match really of the century. It's a match that everyone in pool around the world have been dying to see. Half the people in the world think Ephraim Reyes is the greatest player who's ever lived. The other half think Mike Siegel is the greatest player that ever lived. Five in the corner. Ephraim Reyes absolutely can do things that I don't think I've ever seen before. <laughs> it's a great shot. That was unbelievable. It had to play it off that ball. That's what you call it a carom shot. Exactly, and, and the average person probably wouldn't have done that. In the corner. Couldn't have done. Certainly not on purpose. Oh, and he couldn't get it to drop into the corner, so we'll see the king for the first time. Unbelievable, Lori. What happened here? Was this nerves? I mean, this was not a. I'm thinking it's just nerves right now. You know what? He jumped up on the shot there. I, I, it's definite nerves. Here it is again. Now, it's important that people at home know we're playing on very traditional equipment. The pocket size on these tables are like it was 30, 40 years ago when Fats and Moscone were playing. They're only four and a half inches maximum. A lot of the tournaments people see on television today, the pockets are five or even five and a half inches. And Ephraim would have made that on the easier equipment. This is traditional pool. And I, that's that's one of the reasons he missed that ball. Absolutely. I mean, it hit in, inside the pocket, if you notice, but he just didn't hit it in the middle of the pocket. This is a tough shot for Siegel. <laughs> Watch this. Oh, you know what? Good try. He tried to break those two balls up right there. That was a fabulous try. Almost did it. That's the kind of skill that the uh, pedestrian pool hall player and the guy that plays in the fraternity house and the firehouse is not going to be able to master in a couple of days. Exactly. There's a lot of people at home right now who would say, gosh, I could have made that three ball. But again, tight pockets and the pressure are going to get to the players. Now, you played Mike in this arena. <clears throat> see what he does here. Then I want you to tell us about the pressure that these players are facing. John. And Mike takes one. That's the pressure right there. <laughs> with a couple of Hall of Famers with an early case of the yips. Now here's. See if he moves. Just... Full ball in the corner. I kind of jumped I think he jabbed a little bit at it. Just a bit, he just didn't have a nice stroke on it. This is once again. Uh, not to not to understate the importance and the significance of this. It's the largest prize pool in the history of the game. 
And as highly decorated and skilled as these players are, anybody's going to feel a little bit of the heat in a situation like this. The first two racks, you're, you're going to see a little bit of the jitters. Once they get over that, the match is going to go fast. Well, I remember you, Laura John, in your match against Mike Siegel in the first ever IPT event, saying that you were as tight as a drum through the first, almost first full game. Probably for the whole match. <laughs> Okay. Efren wins the wreck. This is rough. So number two. with his second break. And this time, nothing drops. So an open table for the king. Now, Mike Siegel was voted the greatest living player in the world by Billiards Digest magazine. Mike could be playing to uh, an argued disadvantage in that, as the king, he hasn't had to go through the field. He doesn't necessarily have a quote-unquote tournament stroke right now because all of his racks have been practice racks, whereas Efren has had two full days of competition. Absolutely. You know, even <laughs> though he's played on this table and practiced on this table all week, there is nothing Six like inside. being under the pressure. You have to be under pressure. If you have an option, Lori John, would you rather be the king and have people coming at you fresh, or would you rather be out there playing Doing in the side. field to have your stroke done? I'd have to say playing in the field. Get my jitters out in the beginning and, and come on and play that final. Now, I talked to Ephraim earlier in the, in the practice room. He had just flown in from Japan for this tournament, and he played, you know, two full 12-hour days, five four. matches each day, two days in a row when I asked him how I was feeling and he said tired he said he only slept four hours last night he couldn't sleep he said he was you know excited for the tournament but also the jet lag and the fact that he's been on his feet playing for you know 12 hours two days in a row he's tired Mike is fresh but of course that could mean he's you know maybe not in stroke both you, you know what there's a disadvantage in both in that spot because when when you are in the finals you, it is hard to sleep i can i can definitely attest to that <laughs> you, you can't go to sleep you know the night before and you wind up getting only four hours sleep mike is uh mike's chosen little balls the only thing mike has to worry about is the 11 ball and that eight ball uh are frozen together and again, for the uninitiated, it's not just a question of one shot at a time. When you play at this level, players like Siegel and Reyes are constantly thinking about the next shot. Absolutely. If you've just heard Mike, uh, Mike just made a comment after he made the two ball. He said, I should have hit them after the two ball. That was stupid. I mean, that, that's what he just said. And, and he, he wanted to break out those, that eight ball, right? That five ball. Now, where does he want to leave the cue ball after this? He's going to shoot the one ball next. Or possibly the three ball and break them up now and then the one ball. Oh, it's either the bank or the bus. Yeah, see? Exactly as she described, yeah. That's the problem with eight ball. People don't understand. You know, nine ball is dictated one through nine. You, you, there is no choice on what to, what to play. But in eight ball, when you come down to, uh, you know, two balls being tied up, You've got to break those out in the beginning because if you wait till right now, now he's in a he's in a tough spot here. Well, I'm gonna go for the bank. Shoot anyone again. Now he's talking about banking he's, the eight. Yes. He's he's figuring he's gonna clear his last two balls, and he's figuring that he has to bank the eight for the win. So he'll play the one, one ball. ball. Come down for the three ball. <laughs> Leaves himself in a great position as well. Great yes. break except for that ball. And what he's talking about there, he try he would try to break them up, but there's no guarantee that he's going to get a shot on the eight ball because the, the 14 balls in the corner and the, and the 13 balls in the corner. So he's choosing the right shot. Thank here. here. Yeah. Now he's going to go to the cross side. A tough shot. Yeah, you could make this ten times in a row or miss him ten times in a row to tie the set. Nope. Oh, he missed. Goes long every time. Huh? Wow. There it is. And that's just a miss. You can't. 
What's he referring to when he says it goes long every time? Well, that time he did not go long. <laughs> he actually went short. If he wanted to go long on the bank shot... Well, I think what he was saying is, because he was practicing on this candle earlier, it was going long every single time. Every time. So he was assuming it was going to go long, and all of a sudden it would go short. That's something that we talked about before, Kevin, was practicing in the morning before the people enter, before the camera lights are on, changes the table. If we could go up to, to zero here. Well, Mike Siegel was an eight ball away from tying up this first set at one game apiece. He's left a rather full schedule of balls for Efren Reyes. Oh, as we've seen too many times in this series, Reyes only needs one opportunity so often. And the king is hoping he didn't leave a wide open table. 14. One foot on the ground makes a difficult shot. See, now that was a very bad position there, Matt. He, he came up very short on that shot to where now this is, instead of being an easy shot, it's just ball. a little bit more difficult. Making it look easy, however. He's known as the magician because when he does ball. get out of position, he comes with these incredible shots. He makes anything. He makes impossible shots. I've seen him do things that you can't do. Nine in a corner. Well, Efren Reyes began this with all seven of his strike balls on the table. Mike Siegel again, just the eight ball away from tying up the set at one game apiece. Instead, he's looking at the very real possibility of falling behind the magician two games to none. Hey, for the other side. And Efren is going to keep the break. And uh, yeah, I watch Efren in, uh, in, the, in the games. Yeah, he, break, he can break around five or six. Efren wins the round. This is round number three. Whether you're playing in tournaments versus practicing at home or playing in local tournaments, there's something different about this atmosphere. You have to get over that. Um, now, Efren made a ball. Mm -hmm. Not that, for, again, for those people at home, when you make a ball in the IPT tour, you have your choice. You can either choose solid or you can choose stripes, even though he only made one ball. He has the choice. Again, the balls are breaking up very good all the time, but you still have some balls that are tied up that, that are an issue. Three ball and the ten ball are near each other. And when I played my thirteen, and missed a shot in the first game, and he won that first game, kind of set the precedent. And and his words might come back to haunt him. Yeah, he missed that shot. He didn't stay down. He's been working on that. He didn't stay down. Twelve ball. We're really seeing the contrasting styles of these two Hall of Famers as well. Efren, very workmanlike, rarely talking at the table. Mike Siegel as chatty as chatty can be. He doesn't like this. Well, I, I, I don't know if he was trying to come back to break the 10 and the 3 ball up. Or he can possibly make it somewhere. I guess it goes in the corner. Yeah, it goes in the corner. Fans really appreciating the work of the magician here, including some celebrities who are with us. Joey Fatone, formerly of NSYNC, a big Broadway star now, and Debbie Gibson. Eight ball in the corner. Three left in I was just going to mention that Mike, uh, Mike just said that that little ball is like that second ball. He's going right in the side pocket every time. That's the ball that I make when I break. And it's just the way you hit them. I can hit 100 miles an hour to do that. Well, Efren keeps the break once again. Well, 
you almost get the sense that after that early miss, Reyes is, is back to his automatic self. Those are the grousings of a very nervous king of the hill, folks. One in a corner. You know, the men talk about, you know, the break being the biggest thing. But even though Efren is not, maybe the power isn't behind his break as much as Mike's. But he's hitting the ball so solidly, and, and the cue ball's ending up in the middle of the table that he's getting a shot. And balls are, you know, that one ball's going in the side pocket every side. time. And, and, and Efren's loosening up with this stroke. Oh, believe it. Smooth as glass. And meanwhile, Mike Siegel's thinking about buying one of those trucker's cushions for his chair. This is the kind of form that Efren Reyes has shown off throughout this event. Five in the corner. Oh, Efren Reyes right now. Unless something dramatic happens, he looks like he's going to take the course. <laughs> he, he can break and run the next three days. Eight is down. Efren wins the record. This is rock number five. So Reyes up game five. Four games to none. Now let's look at this one ball, the head ball. See if it goes to that side again. It's not the head ball I don't think it's going. It's that second. Okay, that was different. It was that second ball. It was going to the side. I finally get the chance to hear. Where are the crowders here, Larazan? Right there. The 10 and the 11 ball, those are, those are the only two balls really that are possibly an issue. Everything else is, is uh, fairly open. Fans encouraging Seal to, quote, talk it out and let him get comfortable boy, here. Boy. This isn't the what he has to say. He usually <laughs> commentates his own table. Well, you know, th this is not an easy run out. You know, he, he doesn't have a great opening shot. Solid, to be honest. I mean, yeah, if you really, if you really look, he just said he okay. wants to make a solid. He wants the solids, but he can't make one. I don't want to shoot the seven first. He's got a tough shot. You want an easy shot for your first, you know, sitting for four games, you want an easy shot. And and, and Mike right now does not have one. So he has to come with he has to come with a good shot. Stroke, you know, stroke through, stay down. He's gonna shoot the fourteen right now. So he's picking strikes. This one. It's what he didn't want. It's not good strikes are oh bad. Salads are just a little bit. Boy. It's going to be a trick. Watching Ephraim run out, and now he's got a really hard shot to keep going. Otherwise, Reyes gets in, runs the table again. But it's the right shot. Nope, no good. And he can't get it to run down the rail. Wow. <laughs> now, again, tight can't pockets. There it is. Can't get started. He had a very can't difficult... Very difficult. Table you know I mean? is still open. Tight pockets and tight player, Kevin. Looks like a I just can't get loose. He need he needed an easy shot on that shot. He, if he shot the 14 ball, the odds of him getting out, if he didn't get perfect to shoot that 11 ball, he was finished anyway. So he chose the right shot. An open and friendly table for Efren Reyes with a number of easy shots to choose from here to start. That wasn't that tough one. That was getting decent on that. What are you going to do? You know what I mean? I don't I know. I can't get close to the game. No one would. Mike Siegel sounds like he, we pulled him right out of the Sopranos episode. We going to do, huh? He's been doing that his whole life. <laughs> Efren Ray's whole life has been devoted to pool. And as is the case with so many of the players in the IPT from the Philippines, guys, you know, they'll play all day, all night, for days and days at a time. And live in the pool room. Sleep under the table. You know, when you, when you look at the three players who were the possible, you know, uh, uh, 
players to, to go against Mike Single. They were all Philippines. That's right. <laughs> Francis Lo Bustamante, Marlon Manalo, and of course Ephraim Rance. Seven ball in the corner. Two misses so far by the reigning king of the hill, Mike Siegel. And as, as hot as Efren Reyes is running, he just can't afford to give him that many more second chances. The good part about this format is it's best two out of three sets. All right, it's the first player to decide eight games wins the set. But you have to win two of three sets. The nice part side. about the second set is like a new, it's like a brand new thing. Six ball on the so side. The players should come out refreshed. Lauren, John, let me ask you this. Between sets, would Mike consider going to a practice table just to, just to shoot a little bit? Because he just hasn't been on his feet much here in this match. No, I think Mike knows he's ready. He just needs a shot. He needs a straight in shot in the corner pocket. Or in the side pocket, something easy to, to, to start the momentum. For a 5 nothing lead in this very important opening best of three set. Efren wins the wreck. <laughs> this is rock number six. It's a different wreck again. Look at this. Reyes will keep the break again. So in four of the six breaks, he has kept possession, if you will. Only twice did he not sink a ball. The setup here, fairly open. He's probably going to take the low balls because the three ball is blocking the ten ball. Um, he can play the combination in seven ball into the one ball in the corner pocket. And everything else is fairly wide open again. Efren is not known as one of the best breakers in the world. He has a good break, four ball. But he's breaking very low today. Making a ball on his break, moving the balls all over the table, spreading them out, which is allowing him to run the table. And sometimes the balls, you know, just run a little funny. I five ball. Well, you know what? Some tables too do not like hard breaks, if that makes sense. Some you know, the, the atmosphere. Sometimes you have to break them a little softer in order to do everything not Seven tied up. One. He's shooting the combination now, seven into the one. Great shot. Perfect. Oh, the magician's still rolling. And now just an eight ball away from a six nothing lead. Well, this isn't the easiest shot in the world, is it, Larry John? No, it's not. Because he the, the ten ball, he's got a, the ten ball, he has to maneuver around that ten ball. A he's, again, nothing He's easy. known as a shot. Efren wins the wreck. The this is rock number seven. <coughs> like you said, Kevin, though, he is known as a money winner. So when the cash is high... <laughs> well, Mike may have a chance here. <laughs> he flew out of a chair. Which is good, but Mike needs to slow down right now. Look at the table. 
This, this table is wide open, right, Lord John? Yeah, this table, he's going to shoot the 11 ball right here in the corner pocket, okay, right now. And what that's going to do is that's that's the shot he needs, not a difficult, not a difficult oh, yeah. shot. Um, he's going to just come out. He's going to shoot the 11 ball he's going to come out for in the middle of the table. He didn't hit it oh, very well. Oh God. my goodness. Uh, don't tell me I can't hit the nine. He huh? can't hit, you the, can't hit the, nine. the nine. He can't hit the nine. This is unbelievable here. This is. Huh? What's the deal here now? Tell me what's going on here today. Look at this. I mean, what's what's going on here? Huh? I can't make one in a row. It's unbelievable. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I hope I make it, but uh, I wouldn't hold my breath here. That's all I can tell you. If he tries a shot, that's the only one he, he has. He doesn't even have the whole pocket to shoot at. He's only got half of the pocket exactly. to shoot at. Which, again, with four and a half inch pockets are not, not a lot of room for error. Scratch on top of it. Just to salt up the wound. Punching every ball. I mean, what is this? <laughs> Just didn't even stroke that either. Did he pick up again there? He, he row, picked yeah. up and he did not stroke the shot. Punched the ball. He punched the ball. He did not stroke the shot. This is Ann Scratch. Oh. Ball in hand now for Efren. Which means he can put the ball anywhere on the table. The ball the and everything's wide open. Again. When Mike hit the first shot, the 11 ball, from sitting five games, five straight games, six games, is it six? Yeah, it's five. Five, five, five straight games. From sitting five straight games, he could not even stroke the ball hard enough to get it into the middle of the table. Three misses in six plus games by the current king of the hill. And he's very much in jeopardy of going behind 7 nothing in this first game. He's making the money up in the jaws. I'm going to shoot here, I think. You know, force it over here, here. There. He's talking to the Hall of Famer. 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 What do you say if you're, if you're his cornerman? If you're in Mike Siegel's corner now, you, you want to make him feel good. You, yes, sir. Yeah, you're right, Mike. You're okay. You're okay. Yeah, you have to do that. You know what? If you're a cornerman, you've got to pump up the person that you're trying to inspire. <laughs> you know, you don't want to tell him that he's doing things wrong. And you need to pump him up. Not the time for a hard instruction, I suppose. Definitely not the time. <laughs> Efren obviously is incredibly confident right now. He feels good. And again, he's been playing against the best players in the world for the last two days. He's played 10 matches in two days against the best players in the world. So he's, you know, he's, they call it having the numb stroke. He's like in dead stroke right now and very confident. Five in the corner. You know, a statistic that happened yesterday. Marlon Milano, Milano rather, almost went to this tournament and defeated. That's right. And Marlon had Efren. And Efren beat him eight to four. Came back to win. Exactly. And, you know, Marlon was playing like God up until then in the tournament. Played in the corner, played 16 matches without a loss. Came up against uh, Francisco Bustamante, lost a heartbreaker, and then against Efren. Whoever won that match was coming in to this uh, tournament. Well, he's got a layup with the eight corner. ball here. Take a commanding lead. He missed. Efren wins the round. This game, if he breaks a round, this is round number eight. And for the second straight break, nothing drops for Reyes. That's and watch, and look at this. 
Those two balls are tied up. And that's the key. Tell me how tough this game is. Now, how do you like this action? Huh? I, you know, here's the funny thing is I feel like I'm playing perfect. I ain't made two in a row yet. Figure that out. I'll bank it. Here. One ball across car. If Mike makes right. this. Like 20 to 1. <laughs> Is that his best shot? Right. Is it's his that, only shot. I mean, it was. That's the only. This is this is his only shot. Okay. <laughs> There's no opportunity. Where's my corner, man? <laughs> Quiet. Short. Short is what I thought. See you later. <laughs> you know, he's joking about this uh, on the outside, but he's dying inside. He sure is. You know, that's really hard. You know, he lets a lot of air out by talking, and that's why he got the nickname The Man. Is this an easy layout for Efren for oh, John? Yes, it is. Uh, he, uh, again, he's, he's going to shoot the low balls. Nothing's tied up. <laughs> Everything has a pocket. I'm looking at the ball, the only area. One in a corner. Uh, there's, there's three um, solid balls in a row. Now, I talked to Efren last night after his win against Marlon to, to get into this final. And he's played Mike before. And I said, how's your record? And he goes, Mike uh, has the, the edge. They're pretty close, but Mike has had the edge in heads-up matches with Efren. But that was in nine ball and straight pool, not in Five eight ball. ball. And certainly not in the last ten years because Mike really has been pretty much out of the game for the last ten years. But that's why I I actually liked Mike in this match because he was such a great straight pool player. And straight pool and eight ball are like the chess of pool, where nine ball is, is mostly luck. Just oh. luck or shot making, yep. right? He's over this ball, not easy. It's, it's barely made that. Almost a foregone conclusion, barring a, a, a miraculous turnaround that Mike Siegel will be down one set to nil, uh, perhaps in moments. What does he need to do, Lori John, speaking of Mike Siegel, to get back in this thing? He needs to go regroup. I think Mike just needs to take a break. He needs to talk a lot, get it all out of his system, and, and pretend you cannot change the past. You cannot change the past. You have to just go ahead. All Mike has to look at is it, it's a race. You know, he has to win the next two sets. Again, it's never been done before. Mike Siegel has never lost two sets to lose at a final table. Seven in the corner. And the crutch will make its first appearance here. Efren Ray is, is very skilled in that particular shot. And look at this. Mike is He's saying that this corner. does not have to go. The game is set. I mean, you just never know. Efren wins the first one. The Reyes leads one set. I don't know if you need any luck, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. This is the second set. And this is really... Mike has not broken the balls yet. And the break is huge. So this leg... It's imperative he wins this leg. Oh, baby. Oh, Missed it again. again. Oh. Oh. Wow. Thanks, Tony. This is rock number one. This morning. He wished he was a little bit more nervous. Interesting. Well, Mike's going to have an opportunity. Oh. Hey! Look at this, finally. Let me get the shot. <laughs> Back. 13 ball. All right, here he goes. I didn't want to do that. I didn't no, want to do that. Well, maybe I didn't. He was not looking to hit the 14 ball. He was looking to come two rails and out. He, he's, he's a wreck right now. <laughs> he needs to make this 10 ball in the corner pocket with authority, and he needs to run this rack out. And then we'll see the old Mike. Oh, he was a little 
Look impossible. Mm. There may be an element of just trying to keep Efren seated for a while here. Well, I, I heard him say, someone asked him, you know, run eight in a row. He goes, I'm just going to win the game. <laughs> right. he, all he was thinking about was just winning a game. Right. You know, you got to take one ball at a time, one game at a time. Hold on. I'd like to get this 12 in the moment. I wonder how much of this is just trying to keep Efren off of his feet for a while. I don't think that much. I think he's really playing the crack cautiously. I think he's oh. very cautious. That's too good, though. Again. What he chooses. That's not too good. Now, how is that not too good? He left himself a pretty good pretty good shot, it looks to me. That's the average person now. I mean, the average person saying, well, it's an easy shot. Okay. It is an easy shot, but if you look, the 9 ball and the 14 ball, boy, oh boy. he has to get look perfect on that. First. And the 12 ball, he wanted to get on first. I see. So now it's, it's just, it's a little bit more difficult than if he got exactly where, a little bit more angle. And looking two shots ahead, sure. Tricky. I hit this ball here. Wow. Either one at a little bit more angle to come off the rail, or a little straighter oh, oh, to draw the cue yeah, back. This. this is what the average person doesn't understand either. How important position is. If you mess up on your position, if you don't achieve your position, you don't run it. Yeah, and the position is, after you make the ball in the pocket that you want, where do you want the cue ball to wind up? Exactly. I don't like that either. And, and you, and you move right the cue ball around by... The speed in which you hit the shot and the English, where you hit the cue ball with the cue stick. You hit low, you hit left, right, high, high left, high right, how far high right, with what speed, with I'm what angle. Take a strategy here. And this is all the things that uh, a, a beginning player doesn't do. They just try to make the ball. Mike's not just trying to make the ball, he's trying to move that cue ball to the exact spot he wants it to go. That's the key word is exact. Yeah. Especially in eight ball, like exact it. spot. Something that we're watching here too, I appreciate the fact that there are, is no the time clock. Uh, no time it. shot to where we're seeing thoughts here. Well, it's like, it's like a Tiger Woods lining up a putt. I have 12. <laughs> now he chose this route, even though it's harder, but it's the only way he can get on these two balls here. Um, yes, the 14 ball and the 9 ball. What a great shot. Oh! Roll, baby. What a great <laughs> shot. That was... Did you see how close that thing was scratching? I don't... I, it, it, there wasn't a lot of room for him to make that shot in between one, the 7 ball. He had to hit this with a lot of... Very firm. Now look how close he came to scratching. But he, he had to... Watch this. He had to play it this way. It was his only chance. That's why I said I got a gamble. Mm. Did I draw that? Nine ball. 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 Again, we're looking. At, there's a very little room for error between the nine ball and the eight ball to go into that oh, pocket. Mm. Two balls to go and the eight for the win. Not easy at all. Oh. 14 ball oh, in the side pocket. Oh. Another great shot. This has been a tough course, a very tough diagram on this table <laughs> for Mike Segal. It is. He yeah, definitely okay. wanted to... I could draw it to the rail. I don't think. Uh, he definitely wanted to stop in this position right here. Less angle on the 14 ball. Now he's got a big angle and again makes the top shot a little bit more difficult. He's going to have here... 14. 14 aside. Hold your breath on this one. Hold your breath is right. This is the key shot. He makes this. He wins the game because he can make the eight pretty easy. He misses this. F from Reyes. The balls are all laid up. This is the key shot right here. I mean, the pressure's got to be incredible. You see, it all worried about knocking the eight ball in here because as an amateur professional hacker, that's what I'd be worried about. 
No, I don't think it's on the the angle to, to knock the eight ball. I don't okay. think he has to worry about that. He just needs to worry about making it. Mr. Oh, he just Mr. Mr. Diamond. That's does he moves his head. See, yeah, he look. moved it up. He's not staying down on his shots. Momentum, and now he has handed the table back to Efren Reyes. This is automatic. No, that's actually. Good. See, look at that. See, that wasn't automatic. And again, Mike pops out of his chair. Bear down. Well, I'm cutting this in. I don't know what's going to happen, but that's what I'm shooting at. I'm playing it over there in that corner. 14 ball in the corner. I got no clue what's going to happen, but I'm hitting it hard. I can tell you that right now. Shooting the 14 yeah, ball. losing the game. Not even. <sighs> he did hit that eight ball, though, afterwards. Second miss of the game for Mike Siegel. It looks like he's jumping up a little bit. Look at this. Three. He overcut that three. He overcut that 14 ball and the cue ball did hit the eight ball. Yeah. yeah. You know, Mike spent a lot of time over the last day or so talking about how much more experience he has at a championship table than the two or three players that may have gotten the opportunity to knock him off the hill. And so far, he's the one that appears nervous. Efren Reyes, calm and cool as a cucumber. Well, again, he's calm, though, because he's had the opportunity to shoot. <laughs> he's at the table. Right. He's making balls. Right. You know, when you're making balls, you start building your confidence. Mike has not had every shot virtually that mike has had has been one in the corner a must make super difficult he hasn't had shots like this where Efren is making balls and has right. some easy shots and builds his confidence hasn't it? had any laps that's really true <laughs> six in the corner really has been a, a decidedly different looking and sounding and shooting mike siegel than the one that beat you in the first ever IPT event, Lori John. That's because of nerves. <laughs> <laughs> Your nerves are his. <laughs> his now, mine then. Okay. <laughs> Corner side. You know, Mike told us yesterday that when Efren Reyes first came to the U.S. from the Philippines in the 80s, he blew through everybody, and nobody could find a way to stop him. Mike Siegel was the first person stateside to beat the magician. And that's why Mike has Efren's respect. Seven ball the well, it's interesting because when they pulled uh, players, who, what player do you respect the most? Efren Reyes, answer? Mike Siegel. They pulled the corner. This is rock number two. You know, even as cornerman at this point, they just need to keep encouraging him. There, there's. <laughs> but he's making a ball on the break and and the ball's on. <laughs> but when he has not made a ball on the break, look at the shots that Mike has had to shoot. And that's just really been bad the, luck. The way the ball's <laughs> Yeah. Well, 10 breaks in the match so far from Efren. In half those breaks, he had <coughs> dropped a ball and held on to the cue. But with this format where the winner breaks, anything can happen. If Mike wins a game, he then gets the break, and he could easily run five, six, seven racks in a row. Okay, he's going to shoot the one ball. Oh, wow. Missed. Missed a layup there. Another opportunity now for the king of the hill. Now, again, 
Is this this is pressure? Is that pressure? I, he, I don't know if he took his eye off of it or if he just missed it. Well, you know, Ephra, just a month and a half ago, had had LASIK surgery on his eyes. He also has a neck problem. He just flew in from Japan. He's been, pl- and the good and the bad news is he's played 10 matches in two days, 12 hours a day, maybe fatigue, maybe the physical Four. things. Four. Take out toll. This is a huge break for Mike. He's going to kiss him. Oh. Yeah. You know, there may be some folks watching this at home that are saying, you know, maybe You're Mike just needs to get on the, onto the table and make some shots. Shoot some shots. Quit chatting. Quit taking so much time. Quit chalking your cue. Drop a couple of balls and shut your mouth, and maybe you get rolling a little bit. I don't... To be very honest with you, Mike is having a hard time. He actually, on that first shot, he wanted... I'm almost positive. He wanted to kiss five. the two ball. And move it out. And move yeah. the two ball out. He, he even missed that on the honest straight in shot. Five. He's combination. Look at him. He's a mess. He's a mess. He has to play two combinations in a row because he got out of position twice. Yeah, I'll tell you what. God almighty. Cute. That was just a complete clank job. What was that? I think he miscued. That was unbelievable. Well, you got to. Mike Siegel needs to take a seat, close his eyes, put himself into his happy place for a little while, and and completely regroup because he he just flat tanked that last shot. You know, this is a Hall of Fame player, voted as the greatest living pool player. Here's Renee Siegel, Mike's wife. Forte. Forte. Well, and once again, in in very similar fashion as to the first set, Efren Ray is taking advantage of some miscues. And Mike's in the corner saying that he has to just start freewheeling a little bit, and he does because he's so tight that he's almost... Now, I've been there. You, you almost go blind. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he did say, I, I was correct, he did want to hit the two ball. Right. And I just a shot. Didn't even come close. Didn't come close. So you, you almost go blind in some spots. You just you lose all perspective. Well, it's like a golfer over a two-foot putt, which he'll make a hundred times out of a hundred and, and let that out or miss it by a mile. And you think, how can he miss that? He's a professional. And the answer is the nerves, the pressure, <coughs> all the, the muscle fibers begin to tighten up. It's very difficult when you are tight to loosen up, to, to, to freewheel, as Mike put it. Because when you start, you, you want to freewheel, but then you might hit a ball right into the rail. Obviously, he did not want to hit that seven ball. A lot of material here on this shot for Reyes. Now, these are the two, really, the two greatest players on the planet. Twelve in the corner. Or none, because when you when you ask the average person, you know... Or, or actually the players on who the best players are. These two names come up all the time. This is rock number three. Free wheel it and have fun in. He's gonna get another yeah, I thought he was gonna make get another opportunity there. Every rank looks so good and I can't roll. 
But once again, to bring folks back in uh, statistically, Mike Siegel in 10 games so far has missed seven shots, really uncharacteristic. Mike seven easy shots either, and that's really the challenge. Mike's shots that he's had that he did miss were all these really difficult, difficult shots. He had the pressure, you, you know. Even the greatest players in the world, like we're seeing, can miss those shots. We've seen Ephraim miss those shots. There you go, look at this. That one did not sound good right off the <laughs> He misstruck that ball. I don't this is the watch. I don't understand what's happening. That's the same sound as Mike. Is that a mess? Ephraim was just laughing. It, it was cute. I'll tell you what, though. Those lights, those cameras, this, you know, the. the the standing room only crowd. Every Hall of Famer is here for the first time in history to watch a pool match because this is the greatest match. Anything can happen. Do you know what people don't understand also as a player? When the cue ball is frozen on the rail, I don't care what shot you're shooting, it becomes a difficult oh, shot. Oh, look, at the, look at the, the shot he's that. picking. Well, wow. are you, Lord John, are you surprised he didn't try to shoot the easier ball, the 10 ball? I'm just dumbfounded here right now. Well, you know, maybe he just not even thinking. Maybe he thought he was stuck with his uh, stripes. Or perhaps, you know, Mike is just, he's trying to think so far outside the box to get himself snapped back into consciousness. He wanted to shoot a wild hare and ended up missing. Stripes are definitely the right shot here because nothing, you know, you can shoot the 10 ball on the side pocket. Right. So right there, that, that would make it a correct choice of balls. But when you have not made a ball yet, I know me, I know I, I would have, and maybe, maybe it would have been wrong, but I, I know I would have shot the one ball. God, this thing was funny when I was trying to find that. I almost don't think Efren can believe this. I mean, if, if you would have said this outcome right now. That. It's, something's either wrong with his cue stick. There's something that, just doesn't sound good. That last shot sounded a little cleaner, a little more pure. He got himself in a pretty good position for that ball in the corner pocket. As he drops the 12 ball. That was a beautiful stroke there. Hit the ball with high left hand English, or middle left hand English. Right-hand English came one, two rails, and that beautiful, beautiful line there. Yeah, that's called reverse English. A lot of people at home may not realize just how incredibly difficult that was to make the ball. He needed to use that reverse English to put the cue ball there so he has a shot here. Drops the 14. He's right in position. That was beautifully done. Eight and a quarter. Efren wins the record. This is rough number four. And Mike, Mike knows he's just not representing himself well today. Right. Two balls drop for Reyes on that break. Mike's saying it's embarrassing, and when you get to that point where you just want to crawl under the table and die, it, it, it's hard. It really is hard to, to, to come out of it. Trailing three games to none and what is an elimination set for Mike Siegel. The tables used are the official table of the International Pool Tour, the IPT, manufactured by Diamond. With the traditional size pockets, which are smaller, the cloth is official International Pool Tour tournament cloth, which is a nap cloth, it's slower than a lot of the worsted cloths being used in uh, a lot of tournaments and tours. The balls are IPT tournament balls. Chalk is International Pool Tour tournament chalk. The, the finest equipment's being used here. Toughest conditions. Tougher than any condition in a pool room, generally speaking. Pool in the corner. Oh, 
Now, Lori John, is Efren going to have any trouble with that cluster of balls in the middle of the table there? Well, no, because he's the magician. <laughs> <laughs> A normal human may have. He's got the four, seven, and eight real close to each other. There right. goes the four. Just, did he want to do that? No, he, he just, didn't. He just did this. He did not want and to now do this that. ball, the eight ball, doesn't really go anywhere. No, that was definitely not something that he wanted to do. So he's going to watch for that. He's going to try to probably knock that out some, somehow. As you can see, the seven ball, I don't know if he's going to be able to shoot this seven in this corner pocket. Um, if that goes, he's, he, he, he has that option or he has this option with this ball in the side pocket. Yeah, it so looks like he's ball. chosen the seven ball. He's got to clear that 12 ball too, which he does he nicely. Missed. Not an easy shot here. Almost misses that. <laughs> now he has to make a choice on where he's going to make this eight ball. Is the eight ball going? No, it doesn't. And that's why I'm I'm trying to figure out which ball he's looking at to possibly hit the fourteen or go into the eight ball to just break them up. You know, it seems to look from this match as though when you, you put Efren Reyes up on one foot, he, he really gets froggy up there and can hurt you like share atop the piano. He gets, he props himself up and he's real good. That he is. Now, I, I think he wanted the cue ball. There's no question that he wanted the cue ball to come over here instead of where he is. So he could have had angle on the six ball to possibly try and hit these, the eight ball. Six in the corner. But that did not happen. He's got to clear that ten ball, the blue strike ball, which he does. These have not been easy shots in this rack for Efren Reyes. Five in the side. Okay. So he was trying to get on the tee, yes. so he could play the eight ball down here. Yes. Yes. And he didn't do it. But now did not do it. you can still see it, can you? Does he have any kind of shot there? <laughs> Barely. He has to hit this eight ball first. He cannot hit this ball, the 14 ball, first. Now, if he doesn't hit the eight ball first with the cue ball, oh, no. then Mike Siegel has ball in hand. Yes. But it is not loss of game. Correct. But Mike Siegel should be able to run these walls. There's no question. You would think. <laughs> in the corner. Okay, now, now this is... This is... Magician. He doesn't have it. Oh my goodness. Unbelievable. Good Unbelievable. Where are you eating this chicken notice from another world? Because this magician has done the act tonight. Unbelievable. This is rock number five. Again, to refresh you, Mike Siegel is yet to break in the match. He'll have an open table here once again, however. However, but look at, the, look at the, when he gets an open table, look at the table. You've got the 11 ball is tied up. You've got six these balls ball. tied up. These are tied up. These are tied up. <laughs> Mike says, I want to sit down. I don't want to shoot this. 
<laughs> this is the 11 ball into the 15 ball, which is then going to go into the corner pocket. Be on a positive what? note there. <laughs> this is, does not have to go. Which will open up the stripes. This is unbelievably hard. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta get that mouth flapping again. Get Mike going. It was a beautiful, Look beautiful this. shot. Perfect speed. How to get that? How to get that out? Next is gonna be the nine ball. What he was doing there is he wants to feel what the shot's going to be like if he puts the cue ball there. Is that correct? Yes. <coughs> Whenever you see somebody aiming another ball, that's the, the, where, the, where the cue ball is, is, is not. Yes, he's just looking at angles. He wants to get perfect mm. angles every single time he shoots. And so he doesn't have to use funny English to exactly. try to... Or a hard shot. Right. Again, you don't want... If you don't get exact position... You have you have a difficult shot. Wow, boy! God Almighty! Oh, we saw measure off where he wanted to leave it for the 14 ball. Is that where he wanted to leave the cube? Putting the 14 ball possibly all the way up, all the way up into the corner pocket. I think so. What a let's see again! Unbelievable! It shouldn't be this hard shot. Nope. Go in. Oh, he made it. Oh, he made a good shot, Tom. He made a good shot. Gotta yeah, hit the five. One more time. I would like to hit the five. There. Oh, he, he didn't five. think he had it either there, Kevin. He's still, he's still not out here. And where does he want to leave the cue ball after that? Well, this is Any, ball I was going to say anywhere so, in this vicinity to, to where you can make that 11. As long as he gets it out there far enough. This is a crazy. very, very difficult shot. The closer a cut shot is, distance-wise, between the cue ball and the object ball, the harder it is. Oh, he made it! He made it! Oh, oh, that's that's well, that was Mike Siegel's shot of the match so far. Yeah, that, that was beautiful. You have no idea how he got the shot perfect was. position on that shot. Open in a corner. Was that a harder shot than the uh, the 14 ball he made earlier? Yeah, probably. Come on. I don't know. <laughs> this, you idiot. Where's the spin? He's fine. Now he's just talking a little game there. Oh, no, this is not easy. Oh, this doesn't have to go. He's got this one here and here. That's for the, for the, for the game. He's and fine. This doesn't have to go. This is rock number six. I forgot where he's breaking from. It's been so long. <laughs> This is a brand new shaft. He's only had it a couple days ago. And the first time he used it, he broke and ran eight in a row. Can we see this comeback? I made one. They will keep the It's money. a Rooney. Uh-huh. Give me a shot anyway. Ooh, if I could hit the 10. Ooh, I'm gonna throw in. I can't. Okay, now the... watch this break if you're doing this. This is a little easier. Here's the replay here. Mm. Oh, millionth of an inch. Look at that. Millionth of an inch there. 10, 12, throw them in. Right. Now, if you ever do make the eight ball on the break, 11. it's a win, automatic win. Whew. Well, I wish I could make this 10 ball. See? Boy. Right here, the, the cue ball is frozen against the six ball, the green ball. And this is just and a luck of the roll. I, I mean, Ooh. I mean... He wants to shoot the ten ball in the corner pocket, yeah, and he can't do it. Shot again, right? 
I mean, what are the odds of breaking the balls like Mike All right, play as hard one. as he hit it Ooh, and having ball. one shot only? And this is where people <laughs> instead of three or four, five different options. Exactly. You can be a big breaker, you can be a brilliant breaker, but you've oh. got to have a little luck. <clears throat> if Mike keeps going, he will create his own luck. Well, Billy gets on the scoreboard, winning his first game of the match after losing his first 12. Combination out here? Yes, he's shooting the 13 ball to the 11 ball. Great shot. And he left it perfect. Again, when you break the balls, if you make any ball, you can still choose solids or stripes. You don't yes. have to choose solids if you only made a solid, or if you only made a stripe, you don't have to have stripes. You can choose whichever group you want. And that makes sense because you know if you are yeah. if you if you're getting bad luck, if you if you made three ball. solids and you're hooked on a solid, why should you be punished? Oh, oh baby, oh baby, oh, twelve ball. Now, do you see how nice he stroked that ball? Yeah, it right. He that. stayed down. He stayed didn't down. flip he just... his cue stick off to the right or to the left like he's been doing. I've never seen him do that before. Um, he always just stays down. I'll see he's flipping his cue stick around. Let's see if he moves his cue stick. He stayed down. Shots have been a little more automatic for Mike Siegel after winning a game. He's had some easier decisions, certainly, but uh, he looks a little more comfortable by and large. Well, he's letting his stroke out. Ball. But he's... Still, the pressure is unbelievable. Thank you. Thirteen. We'll have a good look at that thirteen ball. ball perched right at the pocket. He just, just has to get some angle on the fourteen right, he's ball. He's got to get that mm -hmm. cue ball in position. Peter needs to come to the rail. Yep. Oh, the rail. Oh, 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 oh. Now, the reason why he's saying, whoa, whoa, is if that cue ball ends up on the rail, now he's going to shoot over the three ball. Right. Big ball in the corner. Mike wins the rack. This is rock number seven. Second so straight break for Mike Siegel. Drops right. a ball. Cue ball can sit right there. A couple of balls for Mike. Now, do you see his cue stick yeah. bend? I mean, that's uh, the Siegel break. He's got a very oh, powerful really. break. I've seen him break the shaft years ago on, on the break. Right. He, on just, break. he broke his, his shaft just split in half. That's amazing. And you talk about winning eight in a row. How about winning nine straight major tournaments as Mike Siegel did between 1986 and 1987? Oh, that's like unheard of. And back in the day, it was thought that nobody could win three straight international major tournaments. And Mike Siegel ripped off nine consecutive wins. If he wasn't on the map then, he certainly put him on the map, uh, put himself on the map in the middle 80s. Oh, this right. is a great, great opportunity for Mike because none of the balls are in trouble. He's, gonna, he's, gonna choose, he's choosing the low balls. And you can see the two ball, whenever a ball's hanging in the pocket, you usually want to choose that type of, you know, if you can, you want to choose seven ball. that option because Efren can't make that 13 ball right now in that, in that pocket. And he's going to keep that two ball there for a little bit. That's a little more confidence sure. stroke. It's a, it's a completely different stroke than what we saw in the first game. How is he going for the two? He's going for the combination now. But he'll keep the six ball there. Boy, Just trade places. There now. Wanted the cue ball to come a little further, I think. <laughs> six ball. Oh. Oh. Do you see two inches off, an inch off, and you're on the wrong angle? You're see, gonna... 
<laughs> you know, rather than, rather than being here and having a straight in shot, he's now on an angle where the cue ball's coming, you know, just away from the five ball and the three ball. And that's the speed, the pressure, the lights make Four that ball. cloth run a little different speed. Not automatic. He chose to just hit the ball and come out, which is, he's, he's, he's confident now. I can see that. Not necessarily where he wanted to be, but now he's seeing where he can get angle to get on this eight ball because he cannot make the eight ball in this corner. He's going to have to make the eight ball in the right hand corner. Five ball. Five ball. Oh, that bounced back brilliantly to put him in a spot for the three ball. It's all right, but. He would have liked a little bit more angle. God, I really want to swing around. That's. Oh, he is. Now he can... now it's hard for him to reach the shot. Now, no. why not use the crutch there? Three ball. You either like using the bridge or you do not. He, like it. he also <laughs> shoots left hand and right hand. Yes. Oh, you know what? He has. Okay, he has a little bit of burn there. I thought that ball was it was tying up, but that's a. And this is the toughest ball. This yes, is. For the game. Right? Mike wins the rack. This is rock number eight. So important to make a ball on the break. You make the eight on the break, you win. You scratch, the opponent gets the ball anywhere on the table. Now I heard Mike say, when you're playing the top players in the world. Give me a shot, Ski. When you have them 7-2, to 7-2. Give me the shot, to out, Ski. Oh, I can play this, right? You can lose. Right. Oh, Let me look. I'll tell you before I shoot. Play the two. Two ball. He's playing the 12 into the two ball right now. Ah, up. Money. Now, for everyone at home, he picked solids. Even though he hit straight ball first, you can only do that on the break. Right. So Mike called the two ball. He hit the, the straight ball first, but that's a legal shot on the break. Well, now, he always has to hit a solid ball first. Seven in the corner. It, that, was an, that was a perfect shot because now everything is fairly open. Yeah, straight on this guy. Yes, he did. <laughs> Definitely did not want to be yeah. straight and over the nine ball again. Over did it. <laughs> Six in the corner. And this is where he has to use English mm -hmm. to move the cue ball around. Yeah, you don't want to. Look at that. Great shot. Oh, baby. Oh! Got me. Got me. I can't make it, can I? They got me. Look at that. See, he's trying. Yeah. He was trying to make this That's ball here. Leave. I just did that. He wanted to have the cue ball here, so I, I could make it. I can't land no. on five. Now he's all he's all messed up. I'm not careless on this. Does he have a shot there, or is he that I, three ball in the way? Look what I just did. That's well, the three ball. balls, the, the three balls in the That's way. This ball is in the way right okay. now, to where it's hard for him to 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 make the five ball. Now, he might. I'm gonna play the five. I'm playing the five. He's gonna try to jump. I'm playing the five. That's what I'm playing. Playing the five. Five in the corner. Mm. And a scratch to boot. I thought it would jump. Can you believe what I just did? I just got careless on the seven, got straight on the six. I mean, how stupid am I? Huh? You think the ball never got? And uh, the straight balls are just kind of sitting there waiting to be picked off. Yeah, pretty much. They're all right in, right in a row. Well, that was the fifth miss in this second set by Mike Siegel. And again, his misses, unlike, which is very interesting because Mike's misses were all on difficult shots. So really what Mike has done is either he got very unlucky when Efren missed where he didn't leave Mike anything, or Mike just didn't position himself correctly, as giving was, himself. As was the case with that last right. shot. Efren, on the other mm -hmm. hand, missed a few easy shots. Which is very uncharacteristic. So it's pretty interesting both ways. Boy, and the rest of this diagram looks 
fairly friendly for Upper Reyes to pad his lead and jump out to a 5-3 to three advantage in this elimination set. All right, and, and, and Efren then gets to break back, which means Mike could be sitting here for the rest of the tournament and never have another shot. 13 in the corner. Looking back at that, Lori John, did he choose the right shot when he tried to jump and play that five? I, you know what? I don't know. I, I don't know. When he said to bank the one ball, I kind of liked that option because he could have kissed it off of the ten ball, no matter where it hit on the rail, if he could have banked it. Certainly, he was thinking worst case scenario if he tries to jump and make the five, he misses it. He wasn't thinking that he'd scratch on that. Well, again, we're not the smallest key stick that you're allowed to use is a 53 inch. So we're not allowed to use small jump cues anymore. Uh, it's it's very much difficult. Harder yes. to uh, jump with a full, great, very full difficult. Length. Great point. This is Reyes for the game and for a five to three advantage in the set. Eight ball's always the toughest. Everett wins the rest. <laughs> This is rock number nine. Okay, okay Mike. Didn't make a ball. Yep. Yeah. But, but look, <laughs> I mean, Again. this is this is <laughs> unbelievable. Look at the. He's only has one shot, doesn't he? One shot, and it's over a ball. He has certainly not made balls on the break. And, and he's always left Mike with something crazy. Oh, come on now. Come come on. Oh, man. No members, no members roll there. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable what we're seeing here. This is unbelievable. He, he barely could reach that it's shot. Just unbelievable. It's, it's, it's spooky what's happening. I mean, what are you going to do? I can't even see the ball. You get the sense that maybe if we waited five, six minutes, like at the end of Caddyshack, that ball would drop in. Well, you know, Mike is a very emotional player. He was, if I get a shot. 10 years ago, he was in New York. He missed the ball, he broke his cue in half. Snapped it, right? Endless possibilities. Three ball. You know, we've said this a couple of times before. <laughs> yeah, the, the effort has not consistently struck the ball with that crisp, breaking sound. Every once in a while, you hear the clank come off the cue, and, and maybe that's uh, another one of those opportunities for Mike Siegel. Possibly. I mean, he hit that three ball into the rail. Yeah, just a little bit. Just to, he's, he's hitting it on pocket speed, so the, the four and a half inch pockets are taking it. But he's not hitting them in the middle of the pocket. Well, that's a good point. Five On the other hand, I have to say I have never seen, I have never seen in my whole life <laughs> of watching pool the, after the break, Mike, the, the, breaks. Shots that he's, the breaks, the shots that Mike is having to shoot after a break. Right, the breaks that he hasn't got. We are, it reminds me of Tiger Woods playing in the British Open, the Open Championship. I think it was the second or third round, but he hit like an 81 or 82. Everything went wrong. I mean, he was the greatest golfer probably of all time. And everything that could go wrong, every break that could go against Tiger that particular round went wrong. And it feels like the same thing with Mike Siegel. Every break that could go against him is going against him. The question is, can he turn it around? And we all know he can all he has to do is get the break back. Oh, and yeah. okay. That was no. a huge break. Now explain this. He called the ball into the side pocket, missed the pocket that he called. The ball went in another pocket. That ball yeah. stays down. He wanted it in this pocket. He called it in this pocket, but it went in this pocket. Right, and so the ball stays down, but it's a loss of shot. Now it's Mike is back at the table, and he gets a chance to shoot. 13 ball on the side. 
Mike is now the striped balls. Mike played that perfect. Nice stroke for clap. <laughs> A clap, singular. <laughs> he needs the audience to, to warm up. He needs to warm up, and he still has a chance. Well, Mike is every bit the showman. No question, he feeds off the energy of a, of a sold out venue. Is Renee Siegel his wife? Poor Renee, it's worse on the spouses than it is on the players. There's on here one. Yeah, if he went in a little bit more, if the cue ball was here, again, here, he could shoot the 14 into this corner right here, but he didn't Blimey. get there, so. These are small, those are small things that people, it's not really a trouble ball, but it is a trouble ball. You know, back to that crowd for a moment, Laura John, Mike lives in Orlando. He's from Rochester, New York originally, but. It's almost as though this field of the 42 best players in the world came to his backyard to try to knock him off the hill. And so far, the visitor has uh, been doing a number on him. As long as Mike Siegel is at the table, I would never count him out. Oh. Well, when corner, well, both of these players at this caliber have the ability to basically break and run as many racks as they want. He got exactly where he exactly where he wanted. He's loosening up a little bit. Keep in mind, his key, his key is not only just making the ball, but moving the cue ball to give him a good easy shot on the eight. So he's doing two things: moving that cue ball and making the ball. Pulling it, and coming off. In the corner. Six the eight ball, and he trails Efren Reyes by just one game in this race to eight. And he gets the break back, but this does not have to go. Four White proceeds direct. Five for Reyes. Come on, let's see. 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 Let's I'll tell you what, both Efren and Mike, they, they don't know what the word quit or give up means. And they both know they can they can win this. There we go. Don't put me on the rail. Don't put me on the rail. Couple of things drop on the big break. break. I'm saying this has got a big break. You notice how he's been that cue since a great break. Balls are opened up. Cue ball's not frozen on a rail. He actually has more than one shot now to choose that's from, so Laura Jones. <laughs> and the balls, there's no there's no frozen balls together. So that's... Everything's fairly wide open. Oh. I'm going to go for solids. Well, all the balls are wide open. The okay. only balls that he has to worry about are, are here. these down here. That would be his only oh, trouble balls. See, now what he's doing uh -huh. is he's looking where every Six. ball can go. He's kind of figuring out. Oh, I guess his, I gotta play solids anyway, right? He gotta figure out his whole. You know, I'm gonna shoot this first, then that one, then that one, then that. One. He's going through all of his options. Oh, you know, it's very difficult when you have an open rack and you can shoot a solid or a straight. You have to make the right decision. There is a there is correct and there is incorrect, and you have to choose sorry, the right ones. Sorry. It's called playing the patterns. That's exactly right. So he's choosing the low ones. It's a great choice. See, you know, it wasn't the easiest shot on the table, which a, an amateur player or a beginning player would probably shoot the easiest shot. But you don't. Yes, um, a professional at this level is not going to shoot necessarily the easiest shot. He's going to shoot the shot that sets him up for the to run the whole table. Seven and a quarter. And he's shooting the seven ball now because the eight ball doesn't go, you know, he's going to shoot the eight ball in the corner also. So he has to get that seven ball out first. But keep in mind, this is the second set. Efren won the first set 8-0. And Mike really didn't do anything wrong. Wow. See, the cable's getting wet. Boy, this thing's yes, getting which wet. means that the cloth is getting slow. Slower and slower and slower, and the cloth was already slow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which makes it harder and harder and yes. harder. 
Which in the Philippines, so, where the humidity is 150 so percent, they're used to that. <laughs> they're used to. It. Well, the scandal theory is so tried to explain the uh, the great finish by the three Filipino players uh, as having something to do with home friendly conditions. Not to mention the fact that the three of them are extremely talented. Yeah, it, it really is true. It's kind of like in tennis. You know, in tennis, you have be easy. Wimbledon is played on grass. The I French Open the 11. is played on clay. On this and a guy like Pete Sampras always won at Wimbledon but could never win clay. Even though it's tennis, the conditions that? are different. Same thing here. This cloth Perfect. is very slow. An eight ball is different than nine ball on a yeah, fast on. table. Big difference. Different game. Different skills are required. Different strokes yeah, are required. Yeah, yeah. Mike is looking at here. He's trying to figure out what happened was this 11 ball came in. This 11 ball right here came into the picture. He did not want that ball to come to be there. Now the 8 ball, he's checking out if the 8 ball goes in this corner pocket right here. Um, and he's trying to see. He's trying to find the ball, the key ball before the 8 ball. He's trying to pick which one that's going to be and exactly where he that. has to be. Nothing wrong with that. Remember again, Efren won the first set. Mike is down four games to five. He has to win the set, otherwise it's, it's over. over. That was a good stroke. It was a very good stroke. No. And he still wants to get exactly in this position. To me, it looks like the eight ball does not go past the eleven ball. And Mike actually might be trying to get in this area right here to right. shoot the eight ball in this corner pocket. I, I think you're 100 percent correct. Unless I'm, unless I can't see something. Now he makes the ball. Does he get in position for the eight? Watch that cue ball. Oh, he did unbelievable. Wow. He did a great pitch. Wow. The pitch with a hard left turn. Wow. This is to tie the set. Oh, oh my God. Wins the wreck. He did a hard pitch. This is rock number 11. All tied up. Five games apiece in this elimination second set. He can run the next three. A must-win set for Mike Siegel. Otherwise, the new King of the Hill title is bestowed upon it for I get those crampy. I made one, though. Off the rail. Oh! Seems I get those bad. We'll keep the break. Boy, I'm not sure if you're the eight ball. 14 ball. Okay, he's going to shoot the 14 ball in the corner. On the side. No, in the corner. And he missed it. No, he, no, got he didn't. It. He got it. See, now that's called cheating the pocket. He knows how that ball is going to react now. They're learning what the ball does when it hits the rail. He's knowing how far he can hit it on the side of the rail and still get the ball to go in. But it's called pocket speed. Very key. He hit it pocket speed to where if he hit it any harder, it would not have gone. Right. And also the cue ball wouldn't be here for this shot. That was a great shot because this 11 ball that he just pocketed in the corner pocket could obviously oh, could not have gone. What's going to happen? Which there. is why he played. Side, exactly. Actually. He took, again, the harder shot. I'm playing the 12. 12 ball. Just in case I get stuck. I'm 12. Okay, he's going to shoot the 12 ball right past the 9 and the 2 into the corner pocket. Which means he has to be perfect. 12, bump 8, 10 in the same pocket, right? Exactly. That's what that looks like. So he just told us what he's going to do. <laughs> yeah. So, so he's planning to put the cue ball into the eight, bump, bump it out of the way. way. Let's see if it happens. Great. Wow. Oh, oh, oh. And look at that. That's the only problem. Well, what's wrong with that? Did he, he left it too close to the strike ball? Well, what happened was he hit it with such a authority. 
All I had to do was split those balls. For the next shot. Thirteen. <clears throat> Over a ball is very difficult. Very hard, because you notice he's almost hitting down on the ball. When you hit down on the ball, you also put English on the cue ball, which changes the your um, spot on the, on the object ball where you're going to hit. He missed oh, one of these earlier. Just yes. a little better. Just a little better. He's going to hit this perfect, because if, 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 if he hits the cue ball just a little off, it's going to swerve, and he could miss this ball by five inches. It could look horrible. Nope. All I had to do was catch the rail. I got a little fat. Tough shot. Oh, oh wow! What's the deal here, Effie? Wow. That was a relatively uh, easy shot, certainly by their standards. Well, the different Ray is missed. He, he, as I mentioned, the shots, oh, hey. the shots that Effie has missed, like this one, are relatively easy. The shots that Mike has missed have been the very hard shots. I mean, where you could expect him to miss. Well, and this is again an example, perhaps, of momentum. I mean, Efren had been seated for quite a bit. That's what I was going to say. He's been sitting in the chair watching Mike all this time, and now he gets up, and, and again, the cue ball was on the rail. You people, I'm telling you, people do not realize that when the cue ball's on the rail. They were trying to do something with the cue ball funny. Yes. Ah, man. That, lo that Lori John would not be pocket speed. No. Stop pulling his cue stick. Jumping up. He's gonna shoot. He's got a tough shot here. And he missed the bad sound. We heard oh, the he hit the rail there with his with his cue. Something here. <laughs> now these are the two greatest players in the world. You left it good. Again, I'm going to bank it for the corner. The yeah, score is tied at five apiece. This is a crucial game. First corner. This is so hard. It is an unbelievable shot, but it, if he makes it, it is, it is unbelievable. Ah, look how that reversed. Man, that would have been a hanger if that if I'd have hit it. Changing the conditions of how the balls react I mean, off the cushions. To overcut the two. I'm not easy. Yeah. Now, Efren's been cold yeah. here. He's missed two yeah. shots in a row. Yep. Now he's shooting the three ball in the corner, which is the right shot. Again, a crucial game. We're tied at five games apiece in this elimination second set. Whoever wins this game to take a 6-5 lead not only takes the advantage, but needs to only run two racks to win this one. And it could be Reyes to win two more racks for the championship here. He's unhappy where he got position. I mean, he's the balls are kind of open, but he's still got a little bit of a challenge. Again, he didn't want to be where he was. He wanted to be over here, you know, because the, these balls are over here. So the, the one in the seven ball. And right now where his cue ball is, he's going to have to do something just a little bit funny. Let me tell you, guys do not like to slow roll balls like that. Players themselves, I don't like to slow roll a ball like that. And that's what he did not want to why do. Is that's it? Why is that? Because it's just, you, you can put more English on the cue ball and it's, it's a bigger room for error. Hmm. Bigger room to miss than if you just hit the ball in. Contrary like, to what the amateur would think. Oh, exactly. Like, the, for instance, when he shot, when Efren shot that three ball, he hit it in with authority. With authority! Son of a bitch, that's two balls. Siegel has to win this set, otherwise it's over. And Ephraim is the new king of the hill and the richest winner in pool history. And he's left a pretty friendly diagram here. Yes. You know, of the, of the 42 corner. players that were at this invitational from all over the world. Last three. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh.
And I asked Mike Siegel last night why the Filipinos are dominating pool. Heffron wins the round. This is rap number 12. The longer the match goes, the wetter the cloth gets. And the harder it gets. Efren Reyes is two racks away from becoming the new king of the hill and awarding himself the biggest purse in pool history. Well, here, okay, Efren, Efren made a ball on the shot, and this is, which is, I don't think is really going to be a trouble ball. The three ball, so it looks like the 12 ball are the only trouble balls on the table. Yeah, it looks like a pretty open table for someone of Efren's caliber. He, he can knock those balls out right well, he's now. he's going to do that. He's going to shoot the 11 ball in the corner pocket and... Knock the, the 11 ball. Knock the 12 ball away. Perfect. Perfect. I hit that perfect. That so was about where you hit the 12 ball. Again, an amateur might break them up hard. And you didn't have to do that. All you had to do was touch the ball enough to get it out to, for him to be able to make it into the corner pocket. 12 in the corner. Balls are wide open from this spot. Three more, four more open balls of the stripe, and then the, the eight for the win. And that puts this will put uh, Efren on the hill with just one game away from winning it all. And how would that change Efren's life? <laughs> <laughs> Making sure he doesn't do that clink again. <laughs> I would imagine that uh, Efren Reyes will ever be every bit the uh, pool hole rat, to borrow the basketball term, the uh, gym rat phraseology that he, that he was before he uh, he entered this tournament. As we've already talked about, pool is, is such a way of life for him and some of the other Filipino players that are here. Well, you know, after this tournament, win or lose, there's a good chance that Efren is going right to the pool hall. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> right. He's, he's probably right going right to the whole pool hall. Well, I didn't like that shot, what he just did. He put himself on the rail. <laughs> he's, he left himself on the rail. Probably one of the only areas on the whole pool table that would make this now difficult. <laughs> And if you don't, it, it is absolutely the pressure. You just, this is very uncharacteristic, like, for his positioning. Clunk. Thanks. I've got it. Earlier in the tournament, Efren played fellow Hall of Famer Buddy Hall, known as the Rifleman. Turn in the corner. And beat him 8 0. <laughs> Efren's mm -hmm. laughing right now at his positioning. <laughs> 14 in the corner. He's, exactly he's in an okay there. spot there, isn't he? He's fine. It's just not exactly where he wants. And, and I, I think you can just, you know, it's just the tension building up. $200,000. He's in this real close now. He's starting to smell it. He drops the eight ball here. He needs just one rack to become the new king of the hill. And he has the rack. And he has the rack. And he has the rack. This is rock number 13. No. Way out. Not at all. Unless he falters here. Mike Siegel could be packing his bags and giving up his crown. Right. Yeah, you're right, unless he misses. And, and with this layout, I don't Five see ball. that happening. Biggest prize money in the history of the game. 
Mike Siegel losing at a championship table is uh, a rarity, as we've just addressed. Rarer still, in fact, it's never happened where Mike Siegel has lost in a two out of three set championship format. Reference Reyes has just taken his time on this. I mean, this is it. This is it. He, he can take as much time as he needs to, to uh, make sure he's going to get in perfect line with every single shot. Yeah, this, this uh, King of the Hill comes up annually at the International Pool Tour. We have matches all over the world for our tour players and open championships where people... Men and women of any age can try to qualify to play on our tour. I encourage everyone to go to www.internationalpooltour.com to get all the information on our schedule of tournaments, events, and qualifiers. I can tell you one thing. I've told, I've told my children for years... That was a great shot that he just made because he had only half a pocket there. But I told my kids for years they always wanted to play pool. <laughs> I'm like, no, don't, don't. <laughs> and now with the new IPT, I'm telling them, go ahead, go play pool. You can earn millions. Exactly. <laughs> you can actually earn a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. The first time in history, the IPT is now offering pool players a chance to earn the type of money that the PGA uh, players make. Another professional athletes. Efren Reyes is on the verge of climbing the hill and knocking off one of the most highly decorated players this sport has ever seen. Six. Three more balls plus the eight for the two hundred thousand dollar first prize. He's cracked that Cheshire cat-like smile a couple of times, almost like he's, he's he feels bad about winning in the fashion he has. He hasn't really done anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's pretty fearless player, too. The only thing he has to, you know, the only position on this table that he could Sorry. end up in that he can't make the ball would be behind this ball right here. That's the only place he does not want to get. And he's perfect. This is it, folks. <laughs> the fans respond. After Reyes has won this crowd over, Mike Siegel came here a favorite simply in his own mind. And a crowd favorite as well. Efren wins the match, and he is the king of the hill. $200,000. Congratulations. Just don't forget to subscribe and see you in every video. Peace out.